Hey, this is Blake. So we're going to be talking about what's about to happen in this next clip. So John and I are walking around the property after we had that hard frost with the citrus. So we're going to be showing video clips of what happened to it, what made it out, and then you're going to see another clip of the aftermath of a few months of growing. And this is actually the Valencia orange that they almost lost below the graph, but it's pushing back out. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you later. John pointed out the lemon still you can, alive. You can actually see that how much hardier the Harvey lemon is because the twigs are green. The problem is, is it's grafting. It's grafted on a much less cold tolerant branch. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm afraid that it actually froze out from under it. So good lesson, you know, put the cold hardier ones closer to the rootstock. Right. And then the yeah, outer, pretty bad. the outer be less cold hardy, so you yeah. can regraft it. It really should. The also, see there's some fruits right here look you can see where it got the fruits froze well it's got beautiful fall colors yeah it does they're just they're dead and look it was and this you can see why they were hit so hard see they were actively flowering yeah so they don't have as much uh what happened cold here? tolerance yeah but what happened here in tallahassee is we got some a pretty cool um october with a very light frost and then it warmed up into the 80s in November and December. And just before, it was in the 80s, just you know, a week before the freeze. So these trees thought it was spring and they were actively growing and they were not dormant. So they were more sensitive. It's kind of a worst case scenario <clears throat> for us. I was gonna mention uh, the, the issue on the trunk right here. Oh yeah, so this is why you don't graft so low. Um, Trifoliate orange is resistant to foot rot. It's a soil-borne... So it can literally climb up... It's a soil-borne water mold. And so it actually can climb up to these other citrus? It splashes in the uh, rain, and it actually splashes at least about this high. So, so you should really have your graft unions at a minimum of 18 inches. And um, I like even higher. What's the, what's the lowest would you do? 18, 18 inches? Yeah. We have some examples over here to show them, don't we? Not anymore. Oh, they got cut out, didn't well, they? cut them out, yeah. They're gone. Yeah, they are. <laughs> hey, it's Blake. Subscribe. I want you to comment. I want you to share my videos. Let's make it happen. Let's help each other out. And while you're at it, hit the little bell so you, you'll be notified when my videos come out. I appreciate it. We'll catch you later. This are bay tree. Look how healthy it did. The bay no is issues. Hardy between 10 and 0, I think, depending on the growth phase and the variety. Yeah, no issue on it. Yeah, no issue on that. The peaches are definitely dormant. They are now. The satsuma is defoliated. But, and that's probably mostly the wind and also the growth phase thing we were just talking about. But you see the twigs are fine and most importantly, the buds on the twigs are fine. Mm -hmm. So this should leaf back out and flower, assuming nothing worse happens. Yeah, it looks really good. It's on the trifoliate too. And it's probably the only one of the few citrus around that has any leaves at all. It's amazing how tough they are. You can see the stems are all green still. Satsuma, Kishu, some of the other mandarins um, still have their leaves, but that's about it. What kind is this one right here? Pongkan. You see it has some more damage than... Pongkan actually has tips that are burnt here. See these twigs, but uh -huh. there's enough twigs that are not burnt that it could potentially still make some fruit. Too. You can see where this one's grafted at. Yeah. You can see the difference. So this is about as low as you would go, 18. Yeah. And and you actually you can see it on this. And I don't love. Um, I'm I'm really only interested in using the rich 16.6 rootstock because it doesn't do this fluting. And it and makes a nice smooth transition at the mm -hmm. bud union, and it has all of the other characteristics of trifoliate orange that you'd want to have. Right. 
which would for us would be adaptation to soil, loamy, wet, cold soil, mm -hmm. induces maximum cold tolerance. Um, what kind of root stock is this one? My guess is that that is swingle, but it might be trifoliate orange. But I think it's swingle. Looks, you think it's, it's swingle because the trifoliate looks different. It's been so many years I don't remember anymore. <laughs> Hard to keep up with them. Unless you have them wrote down. Yeah. Now this is a crown. Is that where it's like, it's getting bigger every year? It's a slight bud union incompatibility or something, isn't it? So what, what do you think is going to happen with it? Sometimes they, they'll stay fine like this and sometimes they'll just... They tell me that this one is okay. I don't know. Yeah. We'll find out. I have saw some cherry trees in far up north like this and they had no issues. Yeah. They just had these big old... Whatever that is. Yeah. Pretty cool. And you, you see the unfortunate condition we're in. They're already flowering. At the beginning of the year. And because it's gotten cold and it's warmed up, these trees think it's spring and now they freeze. This is why it's a good idea to also have very high chill plants. Mm -hmm. So they want to stay dormant longer. Right. That way you have a backup. It's a good... I like to have for peaches, and, uh, plums, apples, and pears, but mostly peaches. I think about it. Um, peaches and plums. Say 80% of your trees around your target range. Say within 200, you know, chill hours mm -hmm. of whatever your average is here. Around here, it's about 600 long-term average. So anything in the four to 800 range is probably good for us, for like 80% of your trees. But I would also have some very low chill because I already have peaches from the October frost that are this big. Of course, I have to stick to trees in the greenhouse now, but it's nice you get very early peaches. Mm. And then have some very late ones too. It's hard to protect the fruit itself, but there are some peaches that will get ripe here in September. It gives you an option depending on how the weather is that year. The the higher chill varieties, like I can't remember the name, but maybe it's Contender. It's like a thousand chill hour variety. That one always stays dormant until well after the last frost, and it still produces here even on warm years. Wow. Um, Chill hours is not exactly a thing, but we'll do a different video on that. Cool. Maybe we'll go talk to scientists about it. That would be a good idea. Normally, this page is extremely cold tolerant. Um, you can see the twigs are fine, so we expect it to produce, but we're, we're enough weeks after the freeze that you can tell what branches are dead and what branches are alive. And as long as the twigs are good, we still have the hope of some production. It'd be nice. And <laughs> there's two leaves. Two leaves hanging on. Um, so you you know you can I think even this Meyer lemon, you can see there's definitely twig damage. Um, this had a lot of fruit on it, so this the stem was kind of depleted of carbohydrates feeding the fruit. Mm -hmm. But you can see it's got some significant dieback. I mean, some of these twigs are completely died back to where they're not going to fruit, but some of these little twigs probably will. And I think new lemon will be fine. What, what kind is this one? Meyer lemon. Pretty, found, they're found, pretty tough, aren't they, to get hit this hard? Is yeah. it on its own? Um, it's on its own root. Oh, that's, so that's, that explains why. Yeah, it's a rooted cutting. Um, they are more cold tolerant on trifoliate orange. And um, you can see some of these branches are completely frozen. But some of them aren't. And that's the important part. The, I found the Harvey to be just as cold tolerant. As I like mine. Harvey. I really like Harvey. You could expect that to work at. Yeah, if they had, you have to get little misters out here quick to get it even above it. This one is on Rich. See, see the nice smooth bud union? Oh yeah, so that's a Rich uh, trifoliate. Yeah. Rich 16.6 trifoliate. What's the ones around here, the trifoliates? Oh, they're, who knows? Something that came out of Japan 150 years ago and they just grow in the woods. Wow, yeah. you think they're still pretty good? They're better than a uh, Volcomer lemon. <laughs> True. 
the, I think trifoliate orange is the best root stock for the red clay. Even um, even that one that's wild that you see, that trifoliate. Yeah, I like rich better, but yeah, any any of them would be better. Cool. If, if you graft the wild ones up at 30 inches, there'll be a nice smooth bud union, but you still get that fluting at the base, and that can cause. So the wild ones you would have to still graft as high as possible. You, that the wild ones don't smooth out until about 30 inches. Rich, you could graft at 18 and you'll be fine. So this this is sheer Nui. Sure. Um, obviously, I like, I like sheer Nui. Obviously defoliated, but again, the twigs are fine. How old is this tree? Five-ish. So so the, so the wild ones you ha you're forced to have to do over 18 inches, right? I think you'd have to do over 18 inches with any of the root stocks that are resistant to foot rot. Okay. Because that's how high foot rot splashes in clay soil. In sandy soil, they say it only splashes six inches. I, I'm not sure that that's the case, but that's what they say, so okay. I'm going to take their word for it. But I know that in clay soils like this, because the soil particles are smaller, it splashes higher. I bought this tree from Walmart and in about 1995 or 98. And I bought it specifically because um, it, I think I was still in college at the time, because it was grafted so high. You like that. And it was a Valencia. And this tree, see this little curve right here? Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about this before, but this tree froze solid in 2010 in my greenhouse in Quincy. Wow. And sheared off here <laughs> like wow. an icicle. Wow, just like it just broke. Straight across the wood. And I would have bet a significant sum of money this tree was dead. However, um, it was not. It was frozen solid but not dead because that year it was very cold preceding the freeze. So many citrus trees, it's the opposite of this freeze, it was a little bit colder and, and absolutely low temperatures, but the trees got extra dormant, more dormant than we'd ever seen before. So even uh, pomelos and grapefruits and lemons, mm -hmm. trees that we would not expect to take anywhere near those kind of cold temperatures, had gotten so much dormancy and antifreeze from these rootstocks that they were fine at 13 and 14, which are the temperatures we had around here. That's impressive. They, they look much better. So that growth phase is is important when you're considering how frost susceptible they are. And people always want an absolute temperature. Like, it's cold hardy to this temperature. It never is a single temperature. It's a range depending on growing conditions. And depending on how it's pushing out or if it's what what could it, what type of cycle it's in correct yeah where the growth phase is what the root stock is um, in this case it was the worst possible scenario. so your range could be from 10 to 15 degrees correct between back and forth between root stocks and growing conditions it could easily be 15 degrees wow and and just within an individual tree like this um, in the summer when it's actively growing you could have frost damage it 25 or 28 and not have frost damage at or any significant frost damage at 14. It just depends on where you're at in the growth cycle. Mm -hmm. But same story with most of these hardier trees. And Valencia is hardy. It's the fruit that's frost sensitive and it, it's pretty good. Oranges, I think, are a little bit more cold hardy than grapefruit. Like one or two degrees. Except for Duncan, I think Duncan is right up there with the most cold or hardy oranges like Hamlin. Navel, Navel's awfully darn cold. They do like it. Between 50 and 70% concentration alcohol. What happens if you use 90? If, if you use 90, the, the cell walls will close up and... What the, do they look like when they close up? <laughs> they, <laughs> they, <got it. laughs> they go <laughs> and, the, That's a good point. The the, the back the bacteria will, will kind of shield itself from getting killed by the alcohol. So you also added some some water to it. Yeah, this, so. this was ninety percent. So I added I tried it was about here. So I added tried to add like forty percent, and okay. now I'm that filling it down. with seventy percent. And that's pretty much guaranteeing that we're bracketed between fifty and seventy five percent in alcohol concentration. Can you buy less than fifty percent in the store? Do you or is that? I, I would get, if I was going to do this, just to be certain, I would get a bottle of 50% of, uh, and a bottle of 70% and mix the two. 
Fifty. Yeah, but where do you get fifty percent off? They sell it at, because of the pandemic for like hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. So it's really common concentration to find today. Um, this seventy percent has always been the most common available because it's used as a disinfectant, mm -hmm. and that's why it's at seventy percent concentration. Um, ninety percent of people think, oh, ninety percent must be better, and I guess it is for certain things like an alcohol stove. Mm -hmm. But apparently for killing bacteria. You need at least 70 or 50. Would you say that using 90 is better on, on like cleaning your tools? Like if you just, if you're just strictly looking to clean your tools? If, if it's a solvent or for an alcohol stove, you know, 90% is better. But if it's, um, like for, for grafting, yeah, you, you want to, I, I did a grafting class and one of the guys there was a biologist and he told me that I shouldn't be using the 90%. And I said, Oh, good to know. Yeah, because in your mind you think ninety percent's got more yeah. of what you need. Yeah, I should have studied more biology and less chemistry. So with it being lower, the pathogens can't react to it to protect no, themselves. Yeah, 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 the the alcohol gets in there and kills it. You might as well just keep the shaker top and makes it a little easier. There you go. You want to throw these in there? So here's their carry starfruit that got pretty whacked, but still it, still much alive at the bottom. It only had it had um it had a one layer frost cloth, which is good for about eight degrees of protection without the wind. Mm -hmm. And then it had um, some Christmas lights, which is good for about four degrees of protection without the wind. Well, it needed the 12 degrees of protection <coughs> plus a windbreak. Mm -hmm. So in order to survive, it needed another bag and a layer of plastic. So it's frozen. These small branches are frozen. See, that's brown and oxidized. That's dead. But down here, oh, it's well, green underneath the bark. So basically everything an inch and a half in diameter is a lot. You can tell at the color of the bark that most of the swelling tissue here, this is trifoliate orange flying dragon, but you can see by the color of the bark that some of the swelling somewhere in here is where it actually starts being Persian lime. And a lot of times, even when these trees are completely frozen, there's a line of Persian lime or orange or whatever's grafted onto it tissue that survives mm -hmm. and it sprouts up right here above the graft wow. so you kind of want to leave it even though this part might be dead there's a little layer that I guess has extra antifreeze uh-huh because so close to it yeah because I've seen satsumas that were frozen at about zero in the 1950s that were this big mm -hmm. and then they sprouted out wow around here and then, so it's like a hollow trunk this wide with a bunch of little sprouts, and they're still what? still surviving and producing. We could go film them. I think they're still That'd be alive cool. in Havana. So I'll, I'll go ahead and spray these for the beetles too. Yeah. Yes. Doing good. These things happen. What kind of juice is this? It's Shiranui, Satsuma, and Pankan. Wow, this stuff is really good. And we got it about three days after the freeze, so it still has that fresh flavor instead of like old rotten orange juice flavor. Really good. Little update on the okay. citrus. This is Valencia. See the twigs are coming out. It'll still flower on these twigs probably. I, I was looking to see if there's any flower buds. I can't say for certain that I see any flower buds. Well, it might. Still lost the entire crop. For reasons I don't understand, I have the exact tree. I guess mine's larger, um, more established. You know, maybe mine didn't set quite as heavy of a load of fruit. So that that's probably the difference. This one had a really heavy load of fruit for such a young tree. Mm -hmm. And I think it exhausted it. This one seems to be a little bit more damaged than mine. It's a look. It might be pushing some flowers out. Right? See little knobs. There's a little behind the leaves right here. I think those flowers. It's a little early to tell, but okay. I, I would expect them to flower. Actually. I do expect them to flower. This poor thing really got hit hard. We yeah. we pruned these trees really hard last year too. 
um, to try to control scab, and that probably weakened them. Mm -hmm. It's coming out, but the know, whole branch over there looks dead. I'm, I've never seen the honey bell hit this hard before. Wow. Really, it's not. I mean, it's not, it's not dead, but it's just beat up. It's got a lot of twig burn. You can see the twigs are dead to like almost a pencil size. Wow. About a quarter inch in diameter. Little after freeze update. See the new growth from the twigs will flower. See the little flower there? It's a flower bud, a little knobby thing. Um, so as long as your twigs are green, and I'm sure most of these are going to flower, you'll still get fruit. This is a road red Valencia. This is a, this is what a month and a half after the bad storm we had, yeah. winter damage. Yeah, that's about right. And it, it's warm enough. We've had some as warm nice as weather. the 80s, cold as the 30s. It's grown. Unfortunately, it, they're very, very sensitive right now. I don't think they can take anything but the lightest frost. So hopefully we don't get any more. Yeah, certainly nothing in the mid-20s. Right. I, I would probably recommend these guys to put a mister or something on the trees if, if it gets any colder than about 30. Play it safe, you know.